and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're continuing on with our Ring Mong project um, and we're going to try and bring full circle the uh, player attacking and kind of um, ending the battle etc. So to do this uh, let's go into our battle proxy. Uh, the last episode we finished off was covering our physical move, we did our stat move as well. And the next thing we want to do is check our enemy health. So we're just basically checking to see if our enemy creature is dead or not. Um, or fainted. So to do that, all we're doing is we're getting our Ringmon information. We're getting those final stats. We're pulling our HP stat out. And we're just checking to see if it's equal to zero. If it is, we are the enemy's dead. And if it's not, the enemy is uh, not dead. So all I've done is created a new boolean called uh, enemy dead and we're just checking it true or false depending if that health is equal to or lower to zero. And then we're just returning that node. Uh, and that's literally as simple as that is. It's just a quick health check. So if we go back to the event graph um, and go in here. So we, we're putting all that information in. The only thing we need to put in there is our current ring on information. Um, and then out comes that current information into the return node and the party information is going straight into the party info out. So we can now go back to our, uh, uh, where is it, player attacks and uh, actually sorry, go into our event graph. So the player attack is finished now at this point um, and then we're just doing a quick check to see if the enemy is finished or not. Now I'm setting the current Ringmon information here because uh, I need the health to be updated depending on whether it's dead or not. I need it to update the progress bar and uh, all of its other information. So now if obviously, let's go this way first. If um, if the, the creature is still alive, we're going to set its information. We're going to do a two second delay. We're going to change the camera so we look at the creature now, the, the enemy creature. Uh, and we're going to let it do its attack montage or whatever, and then do its attack, which I'm still working on, so we'll cover that in the next episode. But it's going to do its attack. We're then probably here going to do another check to see if our creature's dead. If it is, um, we're going to check to see if we have another available Ringmon with some health. If we don't, we'll just end the level uh, and run away. And if we do have... Um, available creature we're going to spawn that creature's information we'll set our current ring mons party ring mons information put it back in the team and pull out another one that's the plan and then we obviously carry on doing our normal things so let's carry on with if our current creature we're fighting is dead so we set our ring mons health and all this information to say it is fainted we are then going to calculate the XP we gain from the fight and do all our leveling up, etc. So let's go in. Now, we're basically just calculating a bunch of stuff here. Um, same for level and there's a lot going on here. So I'm probably going to break it down into two episodes, but let's begin anyway. So <clears throat> first things first. We are breaking our Ringmon, uh, current Ringmon's information to get its level. This is the creature we're fighting, not our, not our Ringmon. It is the Ringmon we have encountered. <coughs> now, I have given all of the creatures a base experience stat. This is so they c we can work out what experience we need to give to our creature from the fight. Um, you'll find with it within Pokemon, everything has a base experience stat. So we're breaking our party information for our currently selected creature, and we're getting its info. And the first thing we're doing is we're timesing our base experience by our encountered Pokemon's level. Now, there is something supposed to happen here. I think that's to do with the original trainer, but we uh, I haven't uh, added that function in it, functionality in yet. And I think there's something to do with that. Uh, there's another thing to do here as well with that. Um, so uh, I believe it's to do with whether it's a trainer battle or if it's a wild battle. 
If it's a wild battle, it's times by one. But if you're fighting a trainer, it's 1.5. And this is to do with if it's your original Pokemon or not. If it's not your original Pokemon and you've traded to get this Pokemon, you do also get a 1.5 times booster. Once all that's done, you divide it by 7. Uh, and then you add our current XP to it. So whatever this works out to be is what we're going to gain for our XP. We're going to add it to whatever our current XP is. Uh, and then we're going to see if it's over our max XP. Uh, also, we add that into, we have to, by the way, make our struct again. So we add, we, we break our current party information. We break the Ringmon info strut. And we are, whatever that addition is together, we're adding that to our current XP, by the way. That still needs to happen, even if we are going to take it away and do something else with it. So the next check we're doing is to see if it is over our max XP. If it is not, we just add that to our, we just move on down the strut, right? So we, um, we've obviously added the XP here. That just gets moved on into the next bit of information okay so it's just updating that information so if it's not over our max xp we're just adding it to our current xp and we move on down the line um so if it's not true we go down we add we add evs which are uh get added we'll look at that in a minute um but yeah that goes on down there now if we can level up we need to check to see if we are already at our max level if we are, again, we come back down into this this struct down here because we're not leveling anything up. We're just going to keep gaining XP and it's going to go nowhere because it doesn't. It means nothing, right? Uh, if it's not equal to 100, level 100, we move off the false and we increment our current level. We increment our current level by 1. We then minus off um, our max xp we get our max xp i believe no sorry 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 we take whatever so if for example if we needed 200 xp and this addition comes to 250 we will remove the max xp from our current xp so leaving us with 50 and that goes into our xp buffer which then goes in to be set as our current xp if we're also leveling up, we need to work out what our new max XP is going to be. So we times our current level by four, three times, because I'm doing the fast XP for Pokemon. There's there's multiple different ones you can have, depending on what Pokemon you have. But for me, I'm just going to do everything as fast XP. So fast XP is four times our level, times our level, times our level, divided by five. So for example, if you're level five, you're going to be timesing that by 20. 20 times 5 is 100, times that by 5 again, that's 500, then divided by 5, that's 100. So at level 5, you'll always have 100 XP needed before you can level up again. But if you go to level 6, that's going to be 6, 12, 24, 4 times 6, 24, times that by 6 again, times that by 6 again, and then divided by 5, that gets you your, your next new XP. X so forth, X, uh, so on and so forth. So, once we've leveled up, we've determined what our next XP is going to be, and then added our new buffer to the current XP, or our remaining buffer to the XP, we can then push that into the next section, which is checking our moveset. Now, what we're doing here is um, we are just getting our data table row for our base stats, which holds obviously our current information for what moves we can learn. We are then checking to see if this matches the name. So we're getting the same Pokemon or same Ringmon. So for example, if we're looking at Her Badger, it'll find Her Badger for us. Then what it'll do is add its move slots to the move set or, or move slots to move slots. So that's becoming a new variable. We're then getting that row name, so for example, her badger. We are breaking that row and getting our level up move set, and we're finding the same moves 
from this on here okay and then we're checking to see if the current level of our ring one matches that of the level up move we've given it so for example if you can learn a move at level seven if our creature is level six it won't find that it won't check it against that and make sure it's equal but if it is so if we're level seven and we have a move at level seven it will get every move below level seven um, and then we're going to um, no I'll tell you a line it's going to check our current level so it's not going to get every move below that but what it will do is it will get any move that is equal to our current level so for example if we learn a new move at level eight it will find that move when we hit level eight uh, and if that comes back true it will get the row name of our move list and add that move and all that information to our added move uh, and then what we're doing is adding that move to our move slot so we have um, so we have three or four moves for example now this isn't finished this section the the reason is we need to um, we actually do need to add in a check to see if we have four moves already in our move list or move set and then if we do we will want to um, remove a move from the move slot um, so that's something I still need to add into this uh, but for, for now all it, it will get us a new move when we only have less than four moves so uh, for now, you can still add new moves and test this to make sure moves do get added to your creatures. Um, so that's checking the move set. So all I need to do for that is add in the, um, as I said, add in the uh, ability to add new moves. Um, the next thing we need to do is add EVs. Uh, this is essentially just coming straight from your encountered creature. So when you defeat a creature, it will add these EVs together. Um, I've tourniqueted it so it, it, they they make this they remain whole, uh, and it will add all these into this. So it's essentially just breaking the Ringmon information from the encounter, getting its health, HP, attack, defense, SP, SP defense, and speed max. We're getting our party information. We're breaking our EV stats and we are just adding them together tourniqueting it to keep it whole and then we're making uh, another EV structure and adding those into it we're just setting that as it then we make the party information make the party struct and then we return all that information okay now that that's done we can then roll our final stats where we uh, breaking our party information, breaking the strat. We're doing all of that stuff. We're getting the base stat data table row. We're doing a four inch loop and we're checking the name of our creature against that again to find the correct row that we need. Or pulling just, it will pull just that information, I should say. Now, this looks kind of complicated, but what this is doing is now setting up. Um, the new final stats every time we level up. So to do that we need to add in EVs now which we didn't do when we rolled our first creature because we didn't need to but for this what we're doing is <coughs> excuse me what we're doing now is taking that EV we're dividing it by four and then that will get added in down the line but the same information runs through this as it did before we get our base stat information we're timesing it all by two. We are then adding our IVs to it. We are then adding our EVs to it using that divide by four method. So those get added in. We are then uh, timesing it by our current level, dividing it by 100. For the health, we add our current level back into it. But for everything else, we just add five. We then add 10 to health, and then we're round, and then we set that as our HP and our HP max. For everything else, we times by one, and then we round and do it. That's because there, there should be some more code there, which again, isn't programmed into my code yet, 
to be honest, I could probably just delete that and it wouldn't do anything negatively to my thing. I've only added it in so that if I want to add that last little bit of coding down the line, I can do. We then are just making the party, making each slot, and then we're setting our ringmon party. And then we are setting the ringmon party out here as well. Uh, we also cast a third person character there as well. Uh, and then it's just a case of updating the set, the percentage of our XP bar, which is just um, current uh, our max XP divided by uh, no our current XP divided by max XP. Sorry. Uh, and then we're just setting that uh, percentage. And then when we level up, we're also setting our new level as well in the text. And then we're just loading the game slot. And then we're just saving our party information uh, to it. Uh, and it's as simple as that. Uh, I don't know why I'm loading the game from slot here, actually, thinking about it. Oh, so I can get... Sorry, I do apologise. I do know why. It's so I can cast the party save and get those that player location and player rotation. The reason we need that is because when we load back up into Corn Wallington, um, we need to know where our player was. So we're just updating that with this. Uh, the it's the same information. We're just pushing it back through when we load in. And then if these off these falses um, or this false and true, we are doing the same thing. We're just adding the EVs, and then all of the stuff is exactly the same. We're setting the percentage of our new XP bar. Uh, on the battle UI, we're also loading the game and doing the same thing where we're saving our party information and location. Or loading it, should I say, we're loading it. We're not saving it, we're loading it in to that, to the game instance. Once that's done, we can come out here. I, I like to delay for a couple of seconds just while it updates all this information and the XP bar, for example. We then get the player information, we set the game mode back to game only. We hide the cursor, remove all the widgets, and then we open up the level. Uh, it's a bit complicated, but hopefully uh, you follow along. If you have any questions, you can join the Discord. Or, um, of course, you can um, always um, ask in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, we'll be, I'll be more than happy to help out uh, so you can get to my point. From the here on in, I'm just now going to work on the enemy attacks now and get those working. Um, once that's working, we can basically have a back and forth battling system from there on. Because at the moment it's a little bit one sided when I play it. Let's make an encounter anyway. So, for example, if I attack. I mean, I hit, I hit it once. That wasn't a good representation of what I was trying to get at. But um, let's use a growl instead, and hopefully that will. If I use Growl, so as you can see, the cameras flip between the two, um, giving a sort of back and forth feel. So now that's working. Uh, we've also got the party information. We've got our thing up here, our uh, stat information. So you can already see the EVs filling up as I attack each creature. And then when I level up, it will reroll my final um, uh, stats. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, thank you so much guys for watching. Um, hopefully it won't be so long until the next episode is out. But I want to make sure, as I said, everything's working as to, to correctly before I move on with these videos. But thank you so much guys. I will catch you next time. Take care. Bye.